the exercise of the veto power on a number of occasions has seriously undermined the confidence of member states in the ability of the Security Council to maintain international peace and security. The chronic disagreement and deadlock in the United Nations is a matter of deepest concern to all those who wish to see this organization function as it was intended, as an effective instrument to safeguard our common interests in peace and in security. The use of the veto and the threat of its use are symptoms of the prevailing disagreement the practice of the veto is the very reverse of the unanimity principle in the Security Council. Instead of leading to agreement, it aggravates differences. It provokes ill will and undermines friendly relations among states upon which the peace of the world depends. We must reject the idea that if unanimity fails, the will of one, however arbitrary, prevails over the will of many, however reasonable. The unanimity principle cannot work where agreement is offered only on condition that the will of the most intransigent member must prevail. To insist on the exercise of the veto, regardless of its effects on the organized international community, and to reject any efforts to regulate its application under the Charter, in the light of experience, is to stand in the way of effective progress by the United Nations. Правда, уже на конференции в Сан-Франциско раздавались голоса о том, что принятая в Ялте формула голосования в Совете Безопасности представляет якобы ничем не оправдываемую антидемократическую привилегию великих держав, что эта формула будто бы ущемляет интересы малых стран и прочее. Характерно, что с такими заявлениями, как правило, выступали представители тех стран, которые не были непосредственно затронуты войной, не испытали лишений кровавой борьбы, которую вынесли на своих плечах народы СССР и народы ряда других стран Европы. Однако, подавляющее большинство... condiciones políticas han cambiado. Hoy día no son las mismas que predominaban en el mundo cuando se reunió la conferencia de San Francisco. La cláusula rebus y estantibus está implícitamente contenida en todos los tratados. La organización... Let us not be cynics and ridiculously pompous inside our skins or we live in some possible Hiroshima. What then is our first task? To give support to the work of for peace, for agreement and towards cooperation. If necessary to enforce it, if there should be a lack of willingness with some. To strengthen the authority of the United Nations in keeping with the principles proclaimed in the Charter and not give in and yota of this agreement signed by all these states to whom peace is priceless. These efforts at dismantling the peace train are foreign to us because we still see and we hope always to see in the Security Council a magnificent instrument of peaceful endeavor and a guarantee that the road taken at San Francisco is not 
will not and cannot be come forked. I want to suggest to Mr. Gramico and to those gentlemen who quite properly associate themselves with his case that if he thinks his argument is well founded, if as a member of the United Nations he has complaint to make about the identic pact and its relation to the Charter, I imagine his course is quite plain. And I would never attempt to uh, teach Mr. Gromico anything about procedure. They can find redress within the instruments of the United Nations. They can find a place for the subject and the agenda of the United Nations. But I, for one, don't expect that straightforward and orderly procedure. I expect that whenever the Soviet government finds itself in an illogical position or in a politically tight corner within the proceedings of this assembly or its committees, we shall meet with a fresh outburst, or perhaps fresh is a wrong word, a rather stale outburst upon the proceedings which we now call the Atlantic Pact. Indeed, there Presidente, señores delegados, a petición del Gobierno de Chile, la Asamblea General inscribió en la orden del día de su tercer periodo de sesiones la cuestión intitulada Violación por parte de la Unión Soviética de los derechos fundamentales del hombre, de las prácticas y tradiciones diplomáticas y de la Carta de las Naciones Unidas. Los hechos que determinaron a Chile a recurrir al más alto organismo de las Naciones Unidas son los siguientes. La Unión de Repúblicas Socialistas Soviéticas ha negado a cerca de mil ciudadanas rusas casadas con soldados y funcionarios británicos, estadounidenses, franceses y canadienses, abandonar su territorio en compañía de sus maridos o reunirse con ellos en el exterior. President, fellow delegates, the United States delegation is prepared to vote for the resolution adopted by the Sixth Committee regarding the Soviet wives of foreigners and accepts the drafting change proposed by the Chilean delegation. It may be recalled that all aspects of this matter were thoroughly debated in the Sixth Committee and that an overwhelming majority of the committee voted for this resolution. My delegation regrets that there has been no change in the situation since that time, and that the Soviet authorities still refuse to grant an exit permit to Mrs. Lida Yesena de Cruz, 
the daughter-in-law of the former Chilean ambassador to the Soviet Union. Consequently, these unhappy young people are forced to remain against their will in the Soviet Union and under circumstances, we are informed, which give them reason to fear for their immediate personal security and give them no hope whatsoever for a normal life. In Furthermore, Mr. President, my delegation regrets to report that since the Paris session, there has been no change in Soviet policy with respect to the 65 Soviet husbands and the 350 Soviet wives of American citizens who have expressed their desire to leave the USSR in order to live with their spouses. As my delegation stated in Paris, the United States Embassy in Moscow has repeatedly taken up with the Soviet Foreign Office the question of the Soviet wives of American citizens. But the Soviet government has not answered a number of official communications from my government on these cases. Until two years ago, the Soviet government did not permit its citizens to marry foreign nationals. Then, on February, did permit its citizens on this.